Hi guys, uh, here we are again. What are the strategies you want to follow in case you will be faked, you will be copied, replicated with your goods anywhere in the world? Well, first, let me congratulate you. You started out as a small business, but you have become uh, traction and you become medium-sized business or so. That is uh, already a good thing. Otherwise, you would not have been targeted by the fake industry, by the counterfeiting industry. Now, you are a target, and the bad news is that there is no strategy I can, I can think of that fits all. Like there is no business strategy for doing your business, there is no uh, business strategy for the counterfeiting, for fighting the counterfeiting industry or navigating uh, the counterfeiting industry. But here I will give you some hints on how to navigate best such situations. Let's get started. Uh, you have, I want to present you three uh, situations, three different situations and where you may act in a different way. And it depends most of the times of the type of goods you are offering to the market. So let's say you have a good which is an everyday good and which is on the market, you get traction and at a certain moment uh, you see you get advised uh, that your goods are not uh, okay. They are substandard, that you have changed uh, the composition of the goods. Think of the Hui Fong case uh, and you or you see, you don't get complaints, but you see uh, that your goods are replicated in the market and in more or less the same distribution channels, perhaps not in the same store, but in the type of store where your customer are looking into. So first and foremost, you want to ask the questions, is my customer, my target customer, is he confused about the origin of the fake goods? In other words, does he think that these goods, which are in the market, which have my label, so to say, <clears throat> if they come from me? Well, if it is such, you are already in a kind of worst case scenario, I would say, <clears throat> because <clears throat> you have to act quickly. You have built over time a certain trust with your customers. Your customers think that your uh, goods correspond to a certain level of quality, guaranteed, because they use it for five years and it has always the same quality. And now <clears throat> they discover that the same product has a kind of less quality or tastes differently, is watered down or, or whatever it is uh, the customer complain of. Now, uh, what do you uh, want to do? You want to act uh, quickly, as I said, uh, because the uh, trust building is a costly and long time exercise, whereas the, uh, the possibility of uh, losing that trust that goes, uh, if you say in the stock market, so if it goes up step by step, so through the, uh, uh, the steps, and it goes down with escalator. So that is a kind of thing what happens here. The trust building exercise is very slowly, but it can be lost very quickly with uh, some, uh, some bad news all over, then uh, you, are, uh, you are badly off. So you want to enforce it and you want to take care of your distribution channel and of other distribution channels. Uh, you want to uh, make clear that enforcement agency are going to that channels where it has uh, uh, the fake uh, products so that they know, that is the first thing, if it is uh, so good, it has been done, <coughs> then even the distribution channels are confused and thought, well, that was uh, the right product and from the right, uh, right company, the, the genuine, genuine product, and it was not. So you have to uh, make sure that the uh, distribution channels, <coughs> they know uh, what is happening and the retailers, they remove it from 
their shelves. Does that make sense? Is that okay? First case scenario. So that was rather, uh, I would say, low-end goods where the confusion is and the redistribution channels are not so much controlled, which is not the case for the high-end goods. Those uh, Louis Vuitton, uh, Michael Kors, uh, uh, Armani, Gucci, uh, whatever it is. Uh, that can be shoes, that can be fashion wear, that can be accessories, that can be sunglasses, what, whatever it is, Cartier, watches. So this is uh, a situation where uh, the good are expensive and the distribution channels are very much controlled, meaning that uh, the Armani, you will get it in the Armani score, uh, uh, store, or the Gucci in the Gucci store, or the Cartier store, the what, Michael Kors store, or the handbag store uh, of whatever kind, that may be uh, possible, but uh, you will not find it on the street, so to say. And here, more often than not, you find them on the, on the street. Uh, the watches uh, uh, on the street and for a price which is, uh, you know, one twentieth or, or even less of the genuine uh, price of the good. So the customers are the same? Well, probably not, because those who want a Louis Vuitton bag, they can afford it. And if they can afford it, they will buy it in the original one. They will not buy it the fake one. Because, well, in that circle where they are in, uh, they do not want to be caught that they buy cheap, that they buy crap, that they buy uh, anything which would not be something uh, which the others would admire. Just on the contrary, they would, uh, they would think, well, you don't have money, you seemed to uh, pretend to have much money, but you don't have. So they don't want to be caught in that trap, meaning that the customer that buy the fake goods are in reality not your customer. And the, even if the, the goods are substandard, like in the previous case, if they are substandard, you will not get a complaint, right, uh, of the Rolex watch, which has been bought on the street for, I don't know, 100 euros or whatever. Uh, you will not get a complaint about that because the uh, customer knows, well, that is fake. Uh, that has not the same standard as the genuine one. So I will, I will buy it because uh, within my surroundings, that is something extraordinary and uh, they, will, they will tell me, and I will even pretend that, well, I, that is not a real uh, Rolex, it's a fake Rolex, but I paid only 100 euros, and doesn't it look like a, like a real Rolex? So that is the uh, reason, rationale, behind of that buy of the fake goods. Does that make sense? So the, you may, <coughs> as a high-end uh, factory of these goods, you may not react immediately. It is not necessary. They may even, to a certain extent, to give some, some what to say, some uh, prestige, some, uh, some reputation to your product because it is so much, uh, not so much replicated, but so much sought for uh, by other part of the consumers that uh, it gives you even more prestige. What you want to avoid is that everybody in town uh, wears this uh, kind of, uh, of, of, of handbag because then it will be tarnished. So uh, the glamour is gone, everybody has it. You can't ev anymore distinguish which, uh, which is the genuine one, which is a fake one. There are so many uh, kind of it all over the place. So that is where you probably, as a high-end factory, uh, high-end brand owner, you would like to make some, to take some action. Now, let's come to a third scenario, which is a bit different uh, and very interesting. It is the footwear. 
And I don't uh, talk here about the footwear of uh, Armani. Let's take about, let's uh, speak about the footwear, which is the one uh, of um, of the tennis shoes, of the sport shoes, like the Adidas, the Nike, the Michael Jordan, the Pumas. So all all those, uh, which are very popular for the uh, youngest, for the twentieth, thirtieth, but even that will go to the 50th and so on. These shoes, they have a price from, I don't know exactly, but maybe 150 euros or dollars to $1,000. I, I estimate this is more or less the case. That's what I've heard at least. So they are quite high, they can be quite high end. And those who are the latest, the latest hipster shoes, uh, the, the most of hype, of, of hype, uh, they would uh, sell probably for the high-end market, so for the thousands of dollars. Now, what happens now with the consumers? Is the Adidas consumer uh, only very conscious to buy Adidas, yes or no? Well, you have on one hand the trade channels which are closely watched for Adidas. So... On the other hand, you have all kind of shoe wares all around, uh, which also have some trademarked shoes, right? So it is not so clear from the beginning whether your target customer is aware if he gets, if she gets a genuine shoe or a fake shoe. If it is a Adidas a retail store, well, uh, they think probably that is a, a, genuine, a genuine store and genuine shoe and genuine article. But if it is a shoe store with different trademarks, among others, uh, like I said, Nike and Adidas and others, then uh, they may say, well, uh, that uh, might be well uh, also genuine uh, shoes if the price is, well, more or less in the range with a reduction of what? Uh, if they say sale 20%, 30% or so, uh, they may th still think that it's genuine. And if they are substandard, then you are in a trouble again with the trust building exercise between the consumers. Now, uh, the consumers, these are often young people up to 30s or so, and they want to look good in front of their, of their friends, uh, having the latest uh, shoe possible. So uh, they have probably not the, the, the money in order to pay 900 euros or $1,000 for these shoes. So they think, well, I uh, try one of the original one and then I get uh, a fake one for uh, half of the price or even less. And, uh, and then I will see. And if everybody is okay with it and they don't see the difference between the origin and the fake, they will uh, probably uh, either uh, buy one and the other, one fake and one good and genuine and fake, or they may, uh, well, switch to fake all over again. So you have a problem and you might want to react to this. Now, what to do? Enforcement. Well, enforcement where? Enforcement at the source? Well, that could be uh, possible, but you need a trademark at the source, so the country of uh, jurisdiction where the source is, and you need an investigation report, so this is expensive. At the customs, same thing, customs, EU customs. You need an investigation report by saying that ship at uh, that time uh, within that container, uh, that is what uh, I want you to seize. But Again, that is very expensive. Or on the retailer, and you have to look at the retailer. Uh, is it possible to go to all the retailers and uh, very burdensome, very burdensome. Preemptively, I would ask you to look out what do you see on the market. You have to have your pulse on the market and the earlier you get in, the earlier you can react. Does that make sense for you? It is important to have that strategy and to uh, look out one or the other strategy, to build your strategy according to what you see on the market. Don't get the cons consumers confused about the quality of your shoes because trust building is very, very difficult and had cost you dearly. 
Thank you for tuning in. Next time, the extortion industry.